Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with No Budget Reviews, the series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use fluid head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR, but we do have a lot of fun. I think for some time I've, I've been have requested to film a first generation Nissan Micra on the channel and here is one. Um, Alex from the Alex As Alex's Assets YouTube channel um, recently bought this 1989 Nissan Micra K10 1 litre LS. Now the LS was the absolute bottom of the range. Uh, you can see here we've got no passenger mirror despite this is a facelifted car, so this is the last shape of K10 Micra, and we've got no rear wiper. I'm just gonna move quickly past that passenger door because it's not the prettiest thing that we've seen, but viewers, this is no budget reviews. This car didn't cost a thousand, a thousand pounds in its current state. It does need some work, which Alex will be doing, and I think you can look up more of that on her channel. She'll, she'll, she'll uh, you know, d describe what she's doing, but look at this, literally no rear wiper, original dealer plates um, from a dealer you know not too far from here and this was owned by an elderly lady who I think is in her late early 90s something like that um, who owned it from new bought it August 89 and um, it has done I will show you 12,600 miles that's it and you don't really get anything no internally adjustable mirror there is no cassette player. I mean, you get a heater and that's about it. You don't get power steering, you don't get central locking, no electric windows. In fact, you couldn't get power steering, central locking, electric windows on any K10 Microsoft in this country. So it looks really basic. It's like, why on earth would you want to own a K10 Micro? I mean, <laughs> there's nothing to it. Well, it compared with a lot of other cars I've driven from this era, it's it's really good. I mean, it, it reminds me a bit of the Toyota Starlet, but this is even easier to drive. Um, clutches bite quite high because the the lady um, I think had a few goes at clutch control over the years. But it's been serviced and MOT'd every year since '89. You can see the uh, rear wash wipe would be there. Funny little button for when you take out the uh, the key. I wish to remember that. Um, fog light is just down there. The indicator is on the, the other side, but that, if you're used to driving a lot of older cars, which Alex has, then that's not a problem. Hazard light switch, which I like. And then very simple, typical Japanese 1980s style heating ventilation controls, very, very simple to operate. And then down here, the AM radio only. It's an AM radio viewers with no cassette deck. And uh, yes, no map pockets at all. There is a sunroof and there's actually a little cover for that in the boot that we'll have a look at in a second. And also these visors, they're only attached on one side. That's not broken, that's just what they're like. So everything's just sort of cost cutting here. It was quite a popular car for Nissan in this country. I mean, I think it was, it really sort of gave them a reputation over here for, you know, affordable cars that were good quality just open up here quite a long production production run of these as well from um, 1983 for this country up till December 92 hold on one second viewers oh viewers this is no budget reviews and things you know they can go wrong at any time basically the tailgate mechanism on this car is so light that you don't even have to turn the key really, it just sort of opens, it was already open. <sighs> right, let's keep going and not do too many more embarrassing things. Um, or try to anyway. Right, you can see that the sort of um, 
seat belts in the back. I mean, I'm not sure in many markets this car would have come with rear seat belts. Well, we weren't even required in this country until 1987. So it's possible some of the lower spec ones didn't didn't have that. That's the cover for the sunroof if you don't want it coming in. Um, that's the sort of bag thing for it as well. I don't know why the sunroof on, on this, I think um, we're not going to open that today. But we should pull this back. I mean, look how good this floor is and everything. It's really, really good. And that tyre has never been on the car. Amazing. I mean, if somebody offered me what, sort of one of these like this, like Alex did, I, I think I might be quite tempted to buy it. There we go. Right, I am going to have to get in the back, viewers. Which looks quite easy. Yeah, just pull this here. Visibility in this car is amazing, actually. It's really good. There we go. It slides forward. See how good this is. There's the secret mission documents. But I can just put it in the front. Go. Interesting upholstery in this as well. I think the lady said that one of the reasons she bought this car was because of this very jazzy upholstery. Right, if we put this back into there. Oh, it's not too bad, actually. It's me, myself, that. Look at that. It's actually okay. Oh, there's not even any ashtrays in here. What am I going to do? It's not like a Renault 5 or something, it is. It's got inertia reel seat belts and little pop out windows, but no ashtrays. Is that the ashtray there? Oh, no, there is. Sorry. There's one there. But there's no cigarette. Oh, it's got a cigarette lighter. Wow, the height of sophistication. Right, I'll just free myself from my self-imposed prison. There we go. It's not that bad. I mean, I've had cars that are far worse to get in and out. The Starlet was actually worse than this. I'll put a link to the review of the Starlet in the description below. It's got a memory on the seat. That's quite good. Right, let's uh, examine the glove box viewers to see if we can put our secret mission documents in. Got all the original sort of paperwork and stuff in here. There we go. It was AFG Nissan and Cheltenham, which isn't too far from here. Let's just put this in here. No. Failed. That's going to have to go in the back viewers. Um, there's no door pockets. Ah, uh, look, a little chamois. Excellent. Uh, let's have a look under the bonnet then, shall we? Yes, as Alex says, uh, the car's been serviced, it has been maintained, but we have, do have a historical oil leak. I don't think it's actually leaking oil at the moment at all, but like a lot of 1980s, 1990s Japanese cars, cam cover gasket, it's absolutely typical um, for them. But look at all this space in here. Bonnet opens forwards like a Renault 5 or... Um, a Mark II Fiesta. Both cars I've had on my channel before, actually. I've driven an awful lot of 1980 Super Minis now. I've driven loads of them. There's the um, end on gearbox, unlike in a Metro, which is transmission in sump. And as you can see there, it's just had a historical oil leak. But they're very, 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 very reliable engines, these. Very, very reliable. And there's just loads of space to work on it. It's no problem. The Batteries sort of held into a similar way to like a Triumph Dolomite. There's no wing nuts on there. You'd have to sort of get something to it to unscrew them. But yeah, very very simple to work on. And just they're kind of like cockroaches. These cars, they they sort of just go on forever um, if they're not killed off by rust. And the bodywork on this car is really really good, as, it, as you can see. Um, yeah, there's just there's just not much to it in here at all. It's got an automatic choke, which is. A little bit of problem, and that's just the same for a lot of older cars. Um, the the um, even some sort of Fords have problems like that. I think the the, the worst one was the CVH Mark III Escort with the um, variable Venturi carburetor. Right, I think it's time to go for a fun little drive with a car with a 49 horsepower and a four-speed gearbox. Wow, viewers. Just put this window up a little bit so I get slightly better audio. The gearbox in this car, I mean, it's only done 12,500 miles, but even so, it is really sweet for a car from the 1980s. Um, those of you who've driven metros, particularly the, the um, older metros, the pre-1990 ones, will know how 
recalcitrant some of those can be. But this, despite having the sort of highest biting point I think I've ever experienced in a Nissan, is really good. Because the car weighs 630 kilograms, <laughs> it's, it's really, really quite nippy. It's surprisingly nippy. I mean, this engine's got 49 horsepower, which I think is, is really just not enough. And I think we'll just stop at that junction there before we hit anything, because I don't know how quickly I'm going to get out of a junction with this bad body point. So we'll, we'll be sensible viewers and not do that. Right, we've got another gap here. There we go. This car was owned by an elderly lady from New until quite recently. And the clutch is biting really high because typical with the, some of some of some of the, uh, the uh, other drivers, they just haven't quite got the, con the clutch control um, that they, uh, <laughs> they used to probably when they were driving when they were younger. Yes, yeah, so Ale Alex unfortunately <coughs> is coming from a bit of a bit of ill, so just, just, just apologise for that. But uh, she's absolutely she's, she's going to getting better, so she's fine. Um, but yes, it's. It's a real little joy to drive this. There's no power steering. There's no ABS brakes. There's really not much of anything. I mean, we've got no rear wiper. We've got no <laughs> door pockets. We've got just nothing, nothing in, in this at all. But it's really nice. The steering is quite accurate. But the thing that surprises me most is 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 this is this gearbox. It's so. <laughs> it's okay. Welcome to No Budget Reviews. <laughs> so much excitement. Just excited about, about driving this sort of micro, which is it's really nice. I, I'm really surprised how nicely this car drives. It's so easy. I understand why the previous owner bought this in the first place. It's it's just so easy to drive. And they're very, very reliable cars. I mean Rust has killed most of these off now. But until about ten years ago, these were everywhere absolutely everywhere and you can still buy them for very very modest sums the engine that, that's in this car is, is a 1 litre with 49 horsepower there was also a 1.2 with a little bit more I think that was 54 or 56 horsepower some of the automatic um, 1 litre <coughs> is about 60 horsepower In other markets, there was, a, there, was a, there was a turbo version of this engine, I mean, the, similar to the one in Nissan Figaro, that uh, actually produced 110 horsepower in the super turbo on the Japanese market. But unfortunately, we never got that in this country. We only had very modest engines for some reason in the micro or the March if you're from, if you're from Japan. The funny thing about this car as well is it was a badge of the Datsun Cherry for the first couple of years on the market, rather like the Stanza. We only got this car in 83 though, it was launched in Japan in 82 and I think Red Bull Ford's called the Nissan Cherry stores. It was kind of the replacement for the older, older Cherries, but obviously a much kind of smaller little car. I just can't believe how easy this is to drive. It's got an automatic choke, drums are not too bad, the pedals do feel slightly offset. It, I mean, I could, you know, this is one of the few cars from this era I just got in straight away, apart from, you know, Montegos and Maestros, which I obviously love, and just sort of thought, well, I could probably live in one of these every day. I think a lot of people still do. Maybe I want the 1.2, but it's, it's really good. Um, I'm really quite surprised how nice this is. Copious amounts of body roll. Um, we've got a really thin rim steering wheel as well. It doesn't really encourage you to drive this in a sporty way. I hope the super turbos in Japan had better better suspension than this. But yes, it's it's a lot of fun. It's incredibly easy to drive this actually for a car from uh, 1989 at this time. And um, sort of like a mini, which was still you know t about 11 years away from the end of production or the A-Series Metro, but they, they're very good, I very much like them, but they're not as easy to drive for the average person as this is. It's just really, really simple. 
the suspension doesn't sort of kind of crash over bumps like it does in a mini. It's actually pretty smooth. In fact, when there's speed bump, it's no problem. The body roll is a little bit alarming. And, uh, you know, we just went on a dual carriage, which I didn't film. Um, I'm glad I didn't because, uh, yes, it was a bit terrifying putting my foot down and um, just nothing happening. Nothing at all. And I think that's why I preferred a 1.2 version because it's got a little bit more power. Um, 49 horsepower and 4 speeds is not really enough for a dual carriageway unless you want a very terrifying experience. Um, but yeah, servo assisted brakes, not a guarantee, 1989. Volkswagen Polo Mark II didn't have those until um, until 1990 with the facelift. So it's just a very pleasant little little car. Um, ideal for driving around town. Although, uh, you know, with a car with no passenger mirror, no rear wiper, you might want to go up from the LS trim to get a little bit more sort of modern conveniences. But, you know, I've... I've to be honest, I've really enjoyed it. This is very grateful to, uh, to to Alex for letting me have a go in this remarkably low mileage example. So, viewers, should you consider a K10 Micra uh, with your budget of up to a thousand pounds? Well, to be honest, I don't. I don't see why not. I mean. It's very basic. Even the top of the range ones don't really have anything in them. But the way they drive is surprisingly nice. Um, Nissan gained quite a reputation in the 1980s with cars like this for being easy to live with, easy to fix, and very reliable. And this is an example of that. It's probably the most affordable example ever. This is a one litre. It probably gets 40 to 45 miles per gallon, I should think, as well. Although, for motorway driving, I would re recommend getting one of the five-speed gearbox and a 1.2 engine. Um, automatic ones are available as well. I have driven in a 1.2 auto many, many years ago. Um, so thank you once again to um, Alex from Alex's Assets for um, lending me the car. Um, I'll put a link to her channel in the description below. As you can see, there's something else in the background that we're going to be filming quite soon. Um, so, yes, I really appreciate you all watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more episodes of No Budget Reviews. Uh, to like this video, leave a comment below. And, uh, yes, see you again soon for more thrifty reviewing action.